Thank you. Thank you so much. Be before I came to the hall, and, and please listen, and please, please listen to me carefully. Before I came to the hall, be before, before I came to the hall, I received a call from Mayor Lightfoot congratulating me on being in the runoff. Let's give her a round of applause because it takes a lot of courage to run for mayor and it's one of the toughest jobs. So I want to congratulate her on her service. Please let's give her a round of applause. Well, let me just tell you, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been this happy since my son returned from Afghanistan. And I want to thank you all, old friends and new, for joining this campaign. It's because of you we are in the second round. And I want to thank the voters of Chicago for making this campaign about the issues and nothing but the issues. I am running for mayor to bring to the city the type of leadership the city needs. But it's not a solo act. In all of my great public service challenges, from budget director under Mayor Daley to running the Chicago Public Schools when Bill Clinton called the schools a model for the nation, to going to Philadelphia to rebuilding an entire school system in New Orleans after Katrina to the work that I have done abroad. To the work that I have done abroad in, eighth, in earthquake ravaged Haiti and Chile, I've had success because I've always had the good sense to listen to the community, to empower the community, and draw my leadership from the community. Public safety is the fundamental right of every American. It is a civil right. And it is the principal responsibility of government. And we will have a safe Chicago. We will make Chicago the safest city in America. And it will not only come from providing the police with the resources and the support they need, but from building the bond between the police department and the community. So we have true community policing in the greatest sense of the word. Because the police can only be as effective as the community that they work with. And I will support our law enforcement officers, but I will also support and have a zero tolerance when it comes to violating the law or violating the Constitution. And this is coming from a family of four police officers, including my wife. Look, public safety is the overriding issue, but we will not have true public safety in this city until the schools become part of the public safety solution. And that means we need to have the type of educational quality and educational opportunities so that we can provide for a future for all of Chicago's residents, regardless of their income, regardless of their zip codes. And that means, that means 
that our schools need to be returned to the community. The money needs to follow the kids back into the community. And our schools need to be open through the evening, through the weekends, on, during the holidays, through the summer. So, and we need to bring the community into the schools, the faith-based organizations into the schools, the park districts into the schools, so we have programs and supports for our children, and we can keep them in safe and secure environments. And finally, finally, I will not be a successful mayor. I will not be a successful mayor until I reverse the generations of disinvestment in Chicago's ports communities. And there is a pathway to accomplish that, which I have articulated for this generation. No more promises. We need to deliver. Because if our city is to grow and prosper, if our city is to grow the middle class and keep the middle class, we have got to invest in those communities that have long been neglected. And we've got to invest so that we are helping those individuals within those communities secure ownership and accumulate wealth. That's what local empowerment is about. So ultimately, so ultimately, that will be on my epitaph, because we need to address the underlying causes of the problems that the city faces, and we have to invest in those long-neglected communities. I am a lifelong Democrat. And for some of you who remember one of the most dynamic progressive legislators, Don Clark Netch, she was my mentor and my boss and my friend for two decades. And she taught me, she taught me the importance of protecting a woman's right to choose. And she gave me an appreciation of supporting and respecting all communities. Which is why, when I ran against Rob McGorvish in 2020, I supported marriage equality when they called it gay marriage. You cannot erase the record. Public service is in my DNA. I am the grandson of Greek American immigrants. Six of our veterans, including myself and my two sons, and my father. I am the father of two police officers, one who has become a firefighter because he, he needs a more predictable work schedule. I've told, I've told people when they say, how hard are you working? I said, well, I'm almost working as hard as our rank and file police officers. But also, two firefighters in our family, and three teachers. We are a family of public servants. I have never thought of doing anything else. My pledge to you is that I'm running for mayor to be the mayor of all Chicago. When people tell me that this used to be the city that works and it doesn't work anymore, I'll tell you, this city has never really been the city that works for everyone. But it will be when I am mayor. So tomorrow, I'm on the road, early morning, five weeks to the finish line. I said I was gonna run an issue-oriented campaign and nothing's gonna stop me. But I can't do it without your help. Are you with me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say this. God bless each and every one of you for for participating in this journey. Uh, let's stay vigilant. We've got five weeks to go. And with your help, 
and with your help, we will be successful. And I want to say this. I want to thank my wife for sacrificing, for sacrificing, for sacrificing her life to my career choices. I'll give her a hug as, as soon as I complete my remarks. That's right. But thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you at the finish line. Paul Vallis promising to start working tomorrow on that runoff election as he leads today with 35% of the vote. He removes on to that runoff election along with 20% of the vote that went to Brandon Johnson. He moves on as well. We continue our election night coverage here on WGN.